The title for this slide could be K versus Q, which would mean almost nothing to most people, but once you get into equilibrium, you see K, you know that's the equilibrium constant, you know that if it's a small value, you know that things aren't doing so well, there's a lot of reverse reaction going on. And then there's Q, which they call the reaction quotient. Boy, quotient, what? Ugh. It sounds like the mathematician developed this. I think of Q as what really happened, you know, when you actually did the reaction, did it exceed the equilibrium constant, go past it, or are you short of it, right? Does it still need to bubble away a little bit, if you will? And here's some situations. Suppose that Q is less than K, so that what really happened is the reaction has not achieved equilibrium, so it's going to continue to shift to the right until it does. These are like really how you can compare them. Suppose that the reaction quotient is greater than K. Somehow you went beyond equilibrium. They re it's like you have too much product. It's going to shift to the left. And if Q is equal to K, ah, you're right at equilibrium and nothing will happen. The reaction is quote unquote done. That means the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction and you're good to go. So that's reaction quotient K versus Q.